Hi, I'm Gary Miller, Senior Vice President and General Manager of Oracle's Advanced Customer Services, which supports the mission critical environments for 6,000 customers globally across on-premise, Oracle Cloud and hybrid ecosystems. Thanks for everyone for joining today. Today, you have the opportunity to learn about the advantages of Oracle Cloud and Oracle services and hear directly from customers. We have a great lineup. Learn from your peers and hear about their successful journey to Oracle Cloud and the benefits they gain by moving and improving their workloads on Oracle Cloud infrastructure. Before we jump to our customers, I wanted to share what we are hearing more broadly um, as common customer themes. First, business agility and speed. COVID is driving customers to work remotely where possible and shift to more to online business. Digital transformation for many customers has been accelerated and getting to the cloud is even more relevant than ever. This drives the need to innovate faster and banks forward to new data enabled business models. For example, replacing paper menus in restaurants with Q reader menus accessed by your mobile device. Using data more effectively requires standardization and simplification of processes, policies, and systems. Many enterprises have shifted their business models to offer online experiences in addition to in-store experience, and we've created new revenue streams using data insights. As an example, in Europe, we've seen a large grocery chain in Spain shift to 80% of their business online um, from in-store, and this has enabled them to expand their market beyond Spain to other countries in Europe. Many customers are having their cash flow negatively impacted. This requires cost reductions while using any available funds for agility spend to meet their critical needs. Keeping the existing systems running, sometimes under higher workloads, is also critical. Every customer I talk to is hybrid, and a majority are multi-cloud. That brings complexity around security, integrations, and manageability. Cybersecurity attacks are unfortunately up 300%. Finally, the battle for talent is even tougher. The traditional location factors have disappeared with most IT professionals available remotely. So in summary, we were hearing, I never want to worry about my data center again. I need to focus on my business, not infrastructure. I need cost savings now, and I need to invest to adapt to the new normal. I need to protect the investment in my existing systems and do even more. And finally, I need to quickly take advantage of modern analytics and SaaS innovations. So how are people achieving this? Move, modernize, innovate. We see customers go through three phases, and you're gonna see that later. First, move their Oracle applications and data to the OCI cloud, OCI is optimized for Oracle applications and databases. Oracle has a set of services to educate customers and then quickly architect and move to OCI. Second is modernizing. OCI provides high performance, availability, security, and expandability. Oracle services can help support and secure your applications and data and then help you use modern analytics cloud and autonomous database. Third is innovation, and that continues indefinitely. OCI's cloud native technologies enable effective development and evolution to SaaS. Over the past 12 months, Oracle Services has helped over 200 of our largest enterprise customers to move their Oracle workloads from legacy data centers to OCI. And, and many of these customers have seen huge uh, performance improvements, anything from 20 to 300%. Oracle services can share many best practices on how to quickly consume the innovation. This is all underpinned by many service innovations on OCI related to security, supportability, and manageability. We see many customer cloud use cases. For example, disaster recovery on OCI. We had a customer with 36 exadatas on premise, and we were able to help them um, uh, provision their disaster recovery on OCI, which was much less expensive than replicating all of the exadatas on-prem. You are now gonna hear from Interactive Corporation, Intermountain Healthcare, and Arcor on their use cases and how they have achieved their benefits. Specifically, 
from Paul Scribano, Sean Davis, and Santiago Adrera. Thank you all for taking the time to share your experiences with your peers. Let's start with Interactive Corporation and Paul Scribano. Paul, welcome, and thank you for sharing your experiences with the customers attending this summit. Can you tell us a bit about yourself and Interactive Corporation? Thanks, Gary, for the invite. IEC builds companies who are guided by curiosity, a questioning of the status quo, and a desire to invent or acquire new products and brands, large and small. From the single seed that started as IEC over two decades ago, I've merged 10 public companies, a generation of exceptional leaders. We will always evolve, but our basic principle of financially disciplined opportunism will never change. IEC today operates Vimeo, Dot Dash, Care.com, among many others, and has also majority ownership of Angie Home Services, which includes Home Advisor, Angie's List, and Handy. The company's headquartered in New York City and has business operations and satellite offices worldwide. Thank you for that, Paul, and thank you for the video as well. Um, mergers and acquisitions are a big part of your business, obviously. Um, how has moving to the cloud helped you with that? Yes, mergers, acquisitions, as well as divestures. There always needs to be an exit strategy, which includes financial application infrastructure. Moving to OCI allows us to split front office versus back office activities. My team needs to be focused on front office core competency activities, such as acquisition and divestiture activities, as well as assisting organic growth across all of our businesses globally. OCI handles all our back office activities, such as product, maintenance, hosting, and disaster recovery, freeing up an immense amount of time of my, my, my team's time. Okay, that sounds great. Again, um, what, before you move, what were some of your concerns when considering moving your eBiz and Hyperion applications to the Oracle Cloud? Transition of control was the primary concern for the application system administrators. Post-migration, the administrator shifted some of their activities from a support to managed activities, which was exactly the intended outcome of the outsourced cloud model. Financially, the cost also shifted from a CapEx to an OpEx categorization, which was also preferred. Once in the cloud, what improvements did you see? You know, business processing, month-end closing, et cetera. Um, as mentioned, moving to the cloud freed up a substantial amount of time for my team to focus on organic business growth utilizing product application functionality. A material example of this was to address the uh, ASC 606 revenue recognition rules, where we implemented deferred revenue, uh, deferred revenue modeling within the AR subledger model, eliminating the need for third-party products. The functionality was also duplicated in a Six Sigma faction across several revenue product streams and businesses. This was a very efficient and cost-effective method. Additionally, we received feedback from our various accounting teams that the subledger close process has been reduced to minutes rather than hours. The value of an hour during a close process is far more valuable than outside of a close process. Okay, that's good. That's good to hear. Um, are you using other Oracle products in the cloud? And, and what, what do you see your next steps for your cloud strategy pool? Uh, yes, we're launching OAC in a matter of weeks. This will replace BIX. Our Angie's domestic operations is currently utilizing NetSuite. Looking forward, we'll continue to expand our global footprint, most likely via acquisitions and divest others, creating independent big box brand names and customers to Oracle and others. Paul, thank you for sharing. Just amazing innovation engine you have there at Interactive Corporation. And uh, we wish you every success with your M&A activities. Thank you. Thank you. Let's move to Sean. Uh, welcome, Sean. Uh, with Intermountain Healthcare. Can you tell us a bit more about yourself and Intermountain Healthcare? Hi, Gary. Thanks for the invitation to participate today. Um, so I'm Sean Davis. I'm the Assistant Vice President of Business Applications at Intermountain Healthcare. Um, I lead the team that has responsibility for the technology that supports uh, finance, supply chain, HR, and payroll. And I've been with Intermountain for the last 18 years. A little bit about Intermountain, we're an integrated healthcare system based in Utah. We're 24 hospitals. We have a medical group uh, that has 160 clinics. We employ uh, over 2,400 physicians and advanced practice clinicians. We have a health plan called Select Health. 
And we employ about 40,000 caregivers whose mission it is uh, to help people live the healthiest lives possible. Sounds the amazing uh, setup you have there. Um, obvious question, how has COVID impacted your business and has being on the Oracle Cloud helped you during this time? Yeah, I mean, as a, as a healthcare organization, we experienced some of the same impacts that other healthcare systems have experienced since March. Uh, and, and obviously we still continue to experience and learn new things and as we've had to quickly pivot to address the needs of COVID and to keep our communities and our caregivers and our patients safe. Um, some of the things that, that, that have impacted us that I would highlight are, you know, in March, we had to defer elective procedures. Um, we had to redeploy thousands of caregivers to other roles, many of which were supporting COVID. Um, we've, you know, had to quickly pivot a, a lot of our um, uh, delivery model to providing online health care and that was supported by past investments that we had made in um, online health care on our connect care platform so people can receive 24 7 online health care on their phone on their computer on their tablets uh, we also like like most organizations had to transition a lot of people to work from home and so we had about 10,000 people that are now working from home uh, but but I was glad that we had transitioned to uh, OCI um, before COVID and are running, you know, the latest version of PeopleSoft Finance and Supply Chain. Um, a little bit about how OCI has benefited us since we made that transition. Um, we put an increased focus on supply chain technology to make sure it was performing well and it was highly available. Uh, we put a lot of focus on our supply chain processes to make sure that our patients and caregivers had the supplies they need to keep, um, to meet the needs of COVID. Um, during, during COVID and being on OCI, we implemented a lot of automated monitoring uh, so that we could get in front of problems before they occur and that they could automatically be resolved before they became an issue in production. So that, that was very helpful. Um, being on OCI, we're seeing increased performance. So our end users are, are seeing better uh, performance when they're transacting in the system. And we're also seeing uh, improved reporting. Uh, one other thing I would highlight is we've also um, been able to quickly scale our solution. We have recently acquired a new organization and uh, just last month we were able to bring them on to our PeopleSoft systems uh, and the system was able to scale and support that addition uh, really easily. So overall, I, I say I was, I'm glad that we had made the transition uh, to OCI before COVID. Um, the, it's able to handle our workload, it's been able to scale, and it's got a, a much larger team supporting us on infrastructure and on the applications. Okay. Uh, it sounds like you and the whole team have been very busy, Sean, in this period, and uh, done a great job adapting uh, uh, on that. Uh, m maybe you could give a comment on your transition, because I know you went through you know, a unique process where it wasn't just a, a move, but you did some, uh, some upgrades at the same time. Yeah, so just for a little background, um, we implemented 18 PeopleSoft Finance and Supply Chain modules, the SOA suite and OBIEE starting in 2012. And we did that with Oracle Managed Cloud Services in a private cloud in the Austin Data Center. Uh, so we had uh, eight years of experience implementing, upgrading, and the daily run and maintain uh, with Oracle. Um, we began in about 2018 discussing some of the benefits of being on OCI um, and, and decided it was a project we wanted to take on in 2019. Um, we also needed to do a PeopleSoft and PeopleTools upgrade and wanted to see if we can combine those three projects together and Oracle was, was supportive of us in that desire to combine the projects. And so we started the project in about May of last year. Um, I would say it was a very formal, very structured, very planned process. Um, we set the goal of trying to accomplish it all in about six months from beginning to end and um, also set a goal of trying to achieve it within our normal monthly uh, maintenance windows, which was a very aggressive goal. Uh, we were assigned a very experienced project manager who we'd worked with in the past. Um, our service delivery manager, our current Oracle Managed Cloud Services team, our, um, and um, our Oracle Functional Services team, product support, um, and our uh, senior ACS management team that we work with were also very involved throughout the six month engagement. Uh, we performed three separate dry runs just to test uh, the timing uh, that we can pull it off in our normal um, maintenance window um, and that we could resolve any you know, issues um, before we moved it into production. So that was very helpful. Um, and then we felt ready to go um, and cut over last November and um, did it within our project timeline and did it within our normal maintenance window. 
Um, we had about uh, two to three weeks of normal stabilization where we made some minor adjustments to the software. Um, uh, but overall, I would say Oracle was a good partner to allow us to combine our projects together into one. And um, we were able to do it on time and we were able to do it on our maintenance window and we did not experience any major issues. Yeah, congratulations, Sean. I think it just shows, you know, for these projects to go well, the, you know, you as a customer need to put the effort into all the planning and testing and, you know, working with all the different parties. So congratulations on that smooth transition and upgrade at the same time. Um, one last question. Now you're on Oracle Cloud. What's next for Intermountain Healthcare? Yeah, so now that we're on OCI, we're starting to look uh, at other opportunities. Um, we're currently implementing monitoring for applications unlimited, so we're looking forward to the benefits that we'll receive there. Um, we're also um, starting to work on a database upgrade, and um, we're ready to move on to the next uh, image for PeopleSoft and the next upgrade for People Tools. And then um, now that we're on OCI, we're starting to look at some of the other service offerings that we can take advantage of, like Oracle Integration Cloud and some of the other AI tool offerings. Thank you, Sean. Uh, a very inspiring story of how you uh, reacted and adapted to the pandemic and relied on Oracle to support you. Thank you for the great work that Intermountain Health is doing to keep us well and safe. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Uh, finally, Santiago uh, with Arcor. Welcome. Uh, can you tell us a bit about yourself and Arcor, Santiago? Hi, Gary. At first, thank you very much for your invitation. It's a pleasure for me to, to be here. Arcor is a leading multinational group made up of three business divisions, consumer food products where we, we produce food, chocolates, cookies, confectionery, ice cream, and functional products. And the other LOBs are agribusiness and packaging. We have commercial offices in the Americas, Europe, Asia, reaching over 100 countries and more than 1 million sales points. We have 45 uh, industrial plants in Latin America, we are the Argentine's leading food company and paper producer, an important player in Latin America. And we are the first global manufacturer, manufacturer of hard candies. We are a leading company of cookies, biscuits, and, and cereal in the region. We have more than 20,000 collaborators, of which 12K are IT users. Regarding myself, I've been working for Arcor for 10 years now. At first, focus on infrastructure and, and leading the migration of the Arcor on-prem workload to different stages of, of the cloud. First to a private cloud in Austin Data Center, uh, within Oracle Austin Data Center. Late, later, we moved to Gen 1, and last year, we've done the migration to Gen 2 of OCI. Since last year, I'm also responsible of the IT service organization, where we turn every business need into an IT initiative and trying to align the IT strategy to the business strategy. Okay. All right, Santiago, that's a, a great overview there. So I think you're the company that went fastest from a private cloud to Gen 1 to Gen 2. I think you did, and you have a very complex environment. So how has being on Gen 2 uh, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure helped you grow and operate at scale to become a global, uh, a global operator? Well, our course globalization came along with acquisition and partnerships with our companies and standing out for our sustainable practices and our, and our ability to enter new businesses. So IT strategy towards this was to be flexible, uh, agile and global and allowing an efficient response on time and at, at the lowest possible cost to the requirements of the business. In Alcor, we understand that IT can improve uh, business per performance and increase enterprise differentiation and competitiveness. Uh, to face it, these challenges, we put a, in place a transformation program that included business processes and applications based on a cloud service. And in summary, we, we looked to, uh, after simplifying our operations and focusing our resources in core in co activities. OCI then provided us more and better services along with economic benefits for the company. It gave us from the uh, infrastructure perspective, the flexibility and agility uh, we were looking for in order to support uh, in time what our business demand. I, I, I know when we met before, you were very anxious to get on Gen 2 OCI. So what improvements have you experienced uh, since you are on OCI? 
Well, uh, besides the agility and flexibility, we, we, we improved the stability and the perf performance of, of, of our instances. We increased the reliability of the applications to transfer that confidence to the business. Of course, we decreased our TCO and, and converted fixed costs into variable, uh, variables. And we, we are not able, able to replicate uh, our business models to new businesses. Uh, it's important also to remark that the migration uh, to OCI was a smooth project uh, and, and no one should be afraid of giving this first step. Um, this took us about uh, nine months to migrate around uh, 200 VMs, 12, 12 apps, 60, 60 terabytes of data, 1,700 of integration processes, uh, and I'll, we have come along with a lot of support on your side. And since day one of the go live operations were running smooth and normally. Yeah, you, you have a very large application footprint, Santiago. Uh, what, are, what are the benefits you are seeing having Oracle services you know, manage those applications for you on OCI? Okay, so in the past, in order to, to be flexible and agile, we understand that we need to simplify the operation. And we, we have done a big effort in standardize uh, our, our operation model for all the group. In that time, several uh, Oracle applications appear in our uh, horizon, you know? So uh, we understand that uh, ACS was the natural solution for, for the appearance of this new footprint, allowing us not to have a big growth on, in, in our structure. We need the right people to, to, to manage our uh, Oracle environment, and we understand that no one better than Oracle to do so. And furthermore, uh, having someone to manage the complete stack from the infra to the application, uh, of course, prior to the appearances of some such models, was not a normal offering when we decided to move to, to the cloud uh, along with uh, ACS Managed Service. And also, this helped us to relocate uh, our resources to more strategic tasks, uh, contributing with their knowledge of the business. Thank you for uh, explaining that, Santiago. So, you know, we've partnered very closely over, you know, several years with you and your cloud mm -hmm. transformation strategy. What's next for Arcor on Oracle Cloud? Well, when we started this journey, uh, along with uh, Oracle as, as partner, we, we, we both devised three, a uh, three-stage plan in order to keep uh, taking advantage of, on the cloud offerings. We first move our work, uh, workload uh, as if to ES instances. Then we start uh, adding some pass offerings and, and uh, a little of the SaaS offering. Mm -hmm. And now we plan to advance further in that sense, seeking new SaaS offerings to migrate some on-prem applications, such as PeopleSoft to HCM or the Mantra to Planning Central. Uh, and again, uh, we, we are also planning to applying some EAI services or machine learning for our, our forecasting and planning, and also following the, the digital transformation of our company, we are developing new digital commerce channels, and from an infrastructure perspective, we are implementing a Kubernetes cluster based on OKE services, and we will start to developing some cloud-based applications. Santiago, thank you for the detailed ex explanation. I think you're a, a perfect uh, example of move, improve, innovate. You know, I think you, you're following that kind of phased approach, which is, uh, makes a lot of sense. Um, we hope th uh, this information will be helpful to your peers attending this summit. Um, also, I want to thank Arcor for finding innovative ways for feeding all of us. As you know, I'm a big fan of your chocolates, so I look forward to meeting you in person soon. So uh, thank you, Santiago. Thank you, Gary. Anytime. So you, you've heard from three very different companies, all innovative in their own ways, uh, all trusting Oracle to provide a secure, highly performant, adaptable cloud, um, along with a partnership to ensure their success. So they chose and trusted Oracle on Oracle Cloud, managed by Oracle. Uh, and uh, I think we're, we're very grateful to be partners with Paul, Sean, and Santiago. So thank you very much. Paul, Sean, and Santiago, really appreciate you coming here and sharing your experiences with your peers here. Okay, to uh, find out more about Oracle Cloud and uh, Oracle Services, here are some useful links. Obviously, they'll be 
in the uh, replay as well. Um, but you can learn more about the uh, OCI or the advanced customer services by going to these links. Thank you. Okay. Um, so if you if you you know look at what we've discussed here, there are a set of services to really help you uh, thrive in the Oracle Cloud. There's architecture first, transition, managing your workloads, superior support, education and training. And um, you know you can rely on either Oracle services to do these things to help you, or partners. And in, in many cases, it's, it's a combination of Oracle and partners. So um, just want to make sure that you know you understand this. This is really an ecosystem where we're here to help you in any way you move forward with your uh, Oracle Cloud journey. 